I'm here at a heavily guarded compound in Kabul, Afghanistan. Its location is a kept secret, and that's for good reason. Here at the Criminal Justice Task Force lies hundreds of kilograms of opium, heroin and cannabis. In the three years which the CJTF has been operational, they've arrested nearly 2,000 suspected drug traffickers, resulting in 600 convictions. The people who work here call this cell their museum. Lying among the dusty shelves sit hundreds of different items used to traffic drugs. Mostly the, the drugs are concealed in, in people's shoes. They conceal drugs in envelopes, carpets, even braids. The Criminal Justice Task Force is made up of Afghan police investigators from the country's counter-narcotics force, local prosecutors and judges. Anyone who's arrested and found with large amounts of opium, heroin or hashish is now brought straight here to the CJTF where they're put on trial and either convicted or acquitted within two weeks. The fast-track process is aimed at stamping out bribery and corruption. I think that the concept as such, bringing together police and prosecutors, is a very important step forward. And the fact that they are being mentored by primarily mentors from Norway and the United States is absolutely critical because they can keep an eye on the whole process to sort of at least minimize uh, the possibilities for corruption because corruption is widespread in this country. The problem the CJTF faces is that almost all of its convictions have been of couriers far down the food chain as explained by this judge who doesn't want to reveal her face. Most of these guys are drivers, cleaners and porters. Since they are poor, they have to say yes to the big fish's offer. The big fish is living in a secure and danger-free place and often, if he is arrested, he can set himself free by bribing the first guy who arrested him. So where does this leave the CJTF in terms of the value of the work they do? If we look at the number of uh, drug traffickers being caught, they, I think that the contribution, it's there, but I wouldn't say that it is, it, it, it's, uh, it's crucial, not yet, because they haven't been able to catch the big fishes. And, uh, but I, I, I think that there is a possibility that they will, and maybe we ask too much, because they don't have all the legal instruments, as I just said, and they need also the real political backing from, from, from everybody in the top to make sure that they really go after the big fishes. Though the CJTF aren't quite getting the catches they'd like, their tackling of smaller fish should still be credited. The UNODC claims that even if every poppy field in the country was destroyed tomorrow, the traffickers would still have four years' worth of exports hidden in the drug pipeline which feeds the West. Mel Preen for the NATO Channel in Afghanistan.